After triumph in the cruiserweight and victory over Carlos de Leon, to become the absolute champion, Evander Holyfield moved to the Royal Division in hopes of getting a fight with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, the undisputed heavyweight champion, your impression of the fight, particularly Evander Holyfield? Well, Evander's putting a great deal of pressure, but as you see, he's fighting an experienced fighter and a very game champion, and, and, he, and he's not intimidating, he's coming to fight. And Evander, as you see, is getting hit with a great deal of punches also, and I don't think he knows for the fighter in, in this particular kind of class. Is Holyfield ready for Mike Tyson? He's a good fighter. As the heavyweight champion, Evander won six victories and became the mandatory challenger for the WBC title. He was supposed to box with Mike, but Tyson unexpectedly lost to James Buster Douglas. In October 1990, Holyfield quickly and easily defeated Douglas by a knockout in the third round, with a great right back to back. It is worth noting that James was in terrible physical shape and was completely unprepared for the battle. The first defense for his newly gained title of absolute champion was to be held in April 1991, with the most likely candidate being Donovan Ruddock. However, Evander's team chose a more lucrative option a duel with the legendary George Foreman. Big George returned to the business 10 years after completing his career in 1987. Since then, he had 24 successful fights, gradually picking up his ratings and shaking off the rust, which formed in 10 years outside the ring. George was already 42 years old, and many experts were very skeptical of his chances in battle against the best heavyweights of the planet. Not even the confident foreman victories over Jerry Cooney, Dwight Cavey, and Burt Cooper dispelled their doubts. George didn't always enter a fight in good shape. During his time outside the ring, he had gained weight, and now it was a huge problem to bring himself back to his old physical condition. But he used his shortcomings and turned them into advantages. His team became more selective and rationale in their actions. I'm just a big old baby boomer. And I'm going to load a boom on that baby. Evander Holyfield. George Foreman. Mr. Foreman, if you think you're going to beat me, you off your rocker. Evander Holyfield. I'm going to be the next heavyweight champion of the world. It's my destiny. Nobody can stop me. I'm not the best fighter in the world, but I've got something that every fighter needs, that third punch. If I throw and miss you with my left, boom, and miss you with my right, boom, and I'll belly bump you. <laughs> On April 19, 1991, in Atlantic City, the long-awaited duel took place. Experience against youth. Holyfield's record was flawless. 25 wins, 21 by knockout, with no defeats at all. But George's record looked no less daunting. 69 wins, and 65 of them by knockout. Just two losses. The only person who sent Foreman to the floor was the legendary Muhammad Ali who welcomed his longtime opponent in the ring before the start of the fight with Evander. The bout began immediately with power. Holyfield acted in his usual style and worked the second number. Foreman went forward, using double elbow protection to overlap and defend from the smashing attacks of the champion. Holyfield moving and jabbing. He wants to be a target, but has been able to trap people against the ropes and put them away. Back comes Holyfield. Evander tried not to allow George to fall with his left hand, because if this happened, then his jackhammer right would immediately follow. Tried to follow up. A clubbing overhand right. The crowd is very excited. Good left by George. Holyfield still has... 
has some bounce in his legs, but a few more right hands like that might take it out. Several times, Holyfield felt George's heavy blows and tried to protect himself as much as possible from this right straight. He used biases and dives in both directions, not allowing Foreman to feel for the target with his left hand. while at the same time, punching quick combinations. In general, up to the seventh round, the champion was more accurate and was winning on the judges' cards. Foreman had only one chance to hit, since it was difficult to outbox his more mobile opponent. And then came the seventh round. At the very beginning of the round, George tricked the champion. Prior to that, he always used a right straight after the jab, and Evander was already used to this attack, managing to block with his left hand. However, Foreman changed his angle of attack on the right and struck a long right side to the ear. He threw weight on his left foot and put all his powerful mass into the blow. The champion was shocked. Foreman began to win. He alternated right side strokes with left bottom strikes. Holyfield tried not to lose concentration and carefully watched George's actions. Evander, while defending, tried to get himself into position for a backswing with his left. He succeeded. Overlapping with coasters, he turned to the left, covering his head with his right hand from a possible attack, and drove into the left side of George's head. This stopped Foreman's rush. Having done this technique several times, Evander felt he had hit right and changed the tide of the battle. George endured about 15 clean hits from the champion. Holyfield realized that he could not overthrow such a mighty enemy. He began to knit Foreman's hands in the clinch, and when he broke the distance, he was actively working with his front hand. The crazy round had to come to an end. Absolutely an amazing performance. Oh, a right-handed drop Buster Douglas for the count. But George just soaking up punishment. Oh, left, right. Another combination. Both men leading on each other. Here comes Holyfield back with a left to the midsection. about a minute left in round 11. Here comes Foreman. Fast pace. Holyfield has moved, moved, moved. 15 seconds. Evander Holyfield defeated George Foreman by referee's decision and retained his titles. George could not become a world champion in this fight, but proved to everyone he was still able to compete at the highest level. Three years later, Foreman knocked out Michael Moore and became the world's oldest heavyweight champion. His record stands unbroken to this day. In my entire career, no one beat me as much as George Foreman in 1991, said Evander Holyfield many years after this memorable battle. If you like a video, Press the like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on any new videos. Until next time.